Okay, so in this third video, this is going to be all about writing and let the students know that for the writing session on day four, they've been focusing on letters, uh, specifically comparing the two kinds of letters and these are the formal and the informal letters. Now for that, you direct them to page 59 of the book so it looks something like this it's just right after the reading drill that they had earlier and to start off you ask them first how they decide that the letter should be formal or informal now if they can recall during day one of their discussions on the uh, on writing the no, day, day two, I'm sorry, day two, uh, they learn about the tone of the letter, which is basically uh, to determine whether something is formal or informal. And the basis for knowing whether it should be formal or informal is whom the letter is for. So, for instance, if they are, are writing to a boss, it should be formal. But if they're writing, say, to a friend, it should be informal but uh, more than of course uh, knowing to whom uh, the letter is they also need to know the many other aspects in which these two kinds of letters are going to be very different that's why the the purpose of this lecture is to give them an overview of the things they have to consider when they write either letter. So if you direct them to page 60 of the book uh, uh, at the top portion, they'll find this table over here that highlights the areas in which they are going to be different, the letters meaning. So, for example, uh, you start with the addressee, um, and if you wish, you could use the slide that's in uh, over here, the slide number 17 that's in the other file. Uh, you can show this to them, and that uh, for the first part uh, they're different because like we said earlier a friend should be uh, informal whereas somebody whom we don't know or somebody whom we are familiar with would be formal um, it's important that they are able to distinguish the two kinds of formal letters and that is because eventually when they have to start the letter and end the letter the greetings and the expressions will be very different um, and then from there, you direct them to uh, the question and then just to, just to confirm that indeed uh, the one on the left of the task over here is clearly uh, informal and the one, on, the one over here is uh, clearly very formal. Now from there, uh, you let them know how different do the start of the letters, you know, looks like. So for example, in here we have dear John and Jane, whereas here we have dear sir or madam. So therefore, uh, you let them know that the main difference really is that if it's an informal letter, we normally start with their first names only, and that if it's formal, we start with dear sir or madam. However, this dear sir or madam is only used if the writer doesn't really know who the sendee is. And that's because when it's somebody whom they know, like their boss or their landlady, this shouldn't be the case. This should be dear, Mr., Miss, Mrs., or Miss, plus the last name of the addressee. So you might want to flash this second row on the screen, like, like this, and point to them how the letters start. In my experience, what I actually do is do some board work. I don't use, I don't, I don't actually use the flash, uh, flash the slides. I mean, but I actually write this on the board um, because it will preempt the information that we have over here, and also it will encourage some variety on your part as a teacher that you just don't basically flash stuff on the screen. So I'd recommend, if you can write this on the board. 
Uh, of course, you can flash this uh, on the computer screen if you want for your reference. We don't show this to the students, so it's just for your reference, so you know exactly what to write. So maybe what you can do is just write first the start on the board, and then you direct them to point uh, to, the, to the bottom of the two letters again over here, and then ask them how the letters end. So for example, in the case of the informal letter, it ends with kind regards, and then the writer's first name, Whereas in the case of the formal letter, it uses yours faithfully and the full name of the writer. So once you've done that, you again, you know, write the text pertaining to end here in the second row. And then from there, you, you guide them towards the third. So, so basically, you, your, your job as a teacher here is to just direct them. To specific ideas for example as you go to the third the introduction the first paragraph of the letter you ask them what do they notice in the first paragraph of the informal and the formal letter so you direct them to the very first sentence of the informal letter and basically what we have there is a friendly greeting okay the words are I hope this letter finds you well that's over here and then uh, the second sentence, on the other hand, is the purpose of the writer. I'm just writing to that particular line gives it away. Now, by comparison, uh, a formal letter would normally have uh, the purpose written straight away. But in the letters they will have to make, you may also want to recommend that besides just the purpose, they might also want to include some self-introduction. Uh, a self-introduction need not be uh, an inclusion of their name or their age or their address, no. It's basically just to let them, the, the reader know that they are a relevant person and that whatever or whoever they are justifies the writing of the letter. So for example, uh, in the case of this situation over here, the letter could start with the words, I am a customer, or I went, to sh I went to your shop yesterday, I am a regular customer, and I'm writing with regard to an appliance that I bought recently from your shop. So just to give them an idea that that's one way of writing a formal letter, at least how to start one. So that's the introduction. Now, once you've done that, uh, you now write point number four, the language. Um, basically, your guide questions here will be what are the kinds of words that are used in the informal versus those written in the informal letter, okay? Direct them to the body paragraphs and then give them time to read the letter and then explore to themselves how they would describe the kinds of words and expressions used in both letters so you let them think for about some for about two minutes up until uh, you ask them or you ask some students uh, to give examples of expressions or words that are very informal in the informal letter so they should volunteer you confirm their answers acknowledge them correct them if need be now the same thing also can be done as regards the formal letter. And once they write or once they say out these words, write them on the board. Uh, allow for some space so that on, on top of these words, you'd be able to write these descriptions for informal, casual, conversational, loose, and professional, academic, and tactful in the case of the formal letter. Now, you might want to add to the words that the students will share, or just in case they are unable to produce any answer, which hardly is the case, you can just basically copy these words as is and write them on the board yourself. Okay? Now, after that, you move on to punctuation. So you ask them, what do you notice are the differences in the kinds of punctuations used between a formal and an informal letter? And students will notice that there's a use of this so-called 
question mark in the informal letter. Uh, oops, let me go back to that. There's also a use of an exclamation point in the case of an informal letter. So you confirm those because basically what an informal letter has is some use of question and exclamation points uh, or marks. Now, uh, emphasize though that while exclamation marks are are actually totally fine in the case of informal letters, just let them know that they need to minimize the use of such punctuations because it would seem like they are like screaming the whole time in their letters. So encourage them to use this like once or not more than twice in the letter. However, emphasize that while there are hardly, there are actually no exclamation marks and mostly just periods in the case of the formal letter, it is still possible to use a question mark in the case of formal letters. Uh, however, the kinds of questions here can be very, very polite, like when the letter or the writer is requesting the letter, they might ask something like, can I have or may I ask, which are totally formal uh, expressions altogether. All right, so that's number five. Now, once you're done with that, you move on to the use of contractions. Uh, you might want to tell them what contractions are first. And then you let them know that contractions are basically uh, the la a lazy way of writing down common expressions like did not, that becomes didn't, or I am, that becomes I'm. So once you give them these examples, you ask them, do you find anything else uh, in the formal letter or in the informal letter, I mean. So they will volunteer words like I've, uh, I'd and so on. So just confirm their answers. Now ask them a question, a follow-up question regarding the formal letters and ask them if they find any of these contractions. And they'll confirm that there's none. And so you write on the board that in the case of informal letters, yes, contractions are actually encouraged, but in the formal letters, they are not. Emphasize though that while contractions are totally fine in informal letters, we strongly discourage them from doing that in the case of essays, whether in the general training module or in the academic module. Uh, we don't want them to contract the words. So emphasize that uh, as a way to end your point number six. Now, you might find that you won't be able to write all of this in just one, one, you know, one side of the board, uh, what happened in the past was that I had to use the other side of the whiteboard because it can be flipped over. Uh, one, two, and three could be on one side and four, or five, and six could be on the other side. Uh, the important thing is that they take down notes as you write them, encourage them, because ultimately when they have to create either letter, these are the guidelines they have to observe. Okay, so that's the end. So this part should last for about 15 to 20 minutes maximum. And once you're done with this one, you move on to that drill found at the bottom of page 60, uh, which is basically to emphasize language or the formality and the informality of expressions. So what you do is you answer first together items A to B. Uh, you read this out loud as a teacher and then you give them the answer. So letter A, the answer is formal. Letter B, the answer is informal. Now for each of these samples, by the way, you direct them to the expressions or uh, manners of presentation that make, say, letter A formal. So for example, A is formal because of the very formal way of thinking, using the words, I would be grateful if, okay? It is also polite because it uses the word please. Letter B is very informal because, first of all, there is a use of exclamation point, there are some contractions, and there is a use of informal, very conversational expressions like, I would hate it if. Uh, the writer here doesn't mean that he'd really hate the person, but it's just an exaggerated way of saying that he'd really like you know, the reader to come to his graduation day. So once you've done that, you direct them to item C, D, and F, <clears throat> you don't need to let them read each of these, and once they're done answering, 
you basically just check their answers, ask them all together what are the answers for C, D, A, and F. Uh, the answer for C is formal, D is informal, E is very formal, it is a forceful kind of formal, and F is very informal. Now, once you're done with this one, uh, I'd like you to direct them to the, um, the very first part of letter writing in their book, and that's found on page page 28 of their book. And that is because this time around, you will be asking them to write a letter. Now, this will be the very first time they'll be doing this, so guide them. Uh, for this particular drill, ask them to write for topic number two. Uh, this one over here. No? Now, I, I'd like you to write on the board some guidelines, uh, like what I did there in MZ. Uh, let them know that this is, or first of all, guide them first whether this should be formal or informal. So in most instances, they would answer informal because it's to a friend. So that's informal. And then from there, you write down on the board uh, the start and the end of the letter. So since this is informal, you write dear plus the first name. And at the bottom, you ask them, so how do we end the letter? That they should write the words kind regards, best regards, comma, and then uh, their first name only also. Now, please uh, help them plan the letter. So paragraph one of the letter should be all about two things only. So direct them again to the notes that they wrote about regarding the introductions of informal letters and that there are two parts. One is an informal greeting. Second, the purpose of writing. So, uh, based on the task here, the purpose of the writing is to let the friend know that you are un that they are unable to cater to their kid and that uh, for, for some reason. So that's what they write in the first paragraph. Now, paragraph two of the letter should explain the circumstances. Why are they not able? So here, you, you guide them. You give them possible scenarios by asking, by asking them the question, what possible reasons could there be that you are not able to help this time? So they'll volunteer ideas, they'll chip in a thought. So you write them on the board and then tell them to choose just one of those possible uh, situations. And then paragraph three, no, paragraph uh, two, I mean, should also contain um, no, I'm sorry, paragraph, paragraph three should contain the features and fees of the service. So maybe uh, here they could volunteer ideas about what they could include as part of their babysitting service. So for example, um, they could volunteer well, they could charge, I mean, for picking up their kid after school or uh, and from there accompany them, you know, in their homework, prepare them dinner, you know, watch TV with them. Um, if it's the weekend, say, you can volunteer an idea that they could bring them or the kids to the park, play with them, uh, whatever the possibilities. They could even volunteer ideas if they like. Um, and also in the third paragraph, they should be leaving uh, the fees of the service. So how much per hour would they charge for all of, the th all of those things that they would be doing uh, as a babysitter? And then from there, uh, they move on to paragraph four where they leave the final message. So normally it is this part where they also leave the contact details to confirm whether the service is fine uh, as well as the schedule and the fees concerned. And then from there, they write the complementary closing and their first name only, and then the letter is done. Now, hand them over some blank sheets of paper uh, for their drill here, and then uh, you, you let them write on that blank piece of paper for only 20 minutes. Now, in reality, since this is going to be their first try, uh, they might find themselves needing more than 20 minutes, so give them a maximum of 30 minutes. Uh, and while they are answering uh, or writing down their letter, please guide them on their paragraphing. 
that they observe spaces in between the paragraphs, that they are able to follow the specific guidelines of formal and informal letters. At the same time, they are able to fulfill the requirements of this task. And once it's done, you take their papers uh, from them, and then you let them know that you'll check the papers for them and they'll have it back the next day for the next session. And from there, your writing part is done. Uh, and this part should last for about an hour. So it'll be about 30 minutes for, uh, 20 to 30 minutes, I mean, for the writing itself. Uh, you spend uh, 10 minutes planning with them. And prior to that, the main input should last for about 20 minutes altogether. Okay, so I hope that this is uh, going to help you uh, deliver this part of the lecture.